In the Second World War, there were two ways of dropping soldiers into forward battle zones, by individual parachute or by crash-landing plywood and fabric gliders packed with troops and equipment behind the enemy lines. 83-year-old Ron Wilcox is one of a diminishing number of glider pilots who have first-hand experience of this kind of warfare. I asked him what it was like to take off and land one of these contraptions in a war zone. And getting up is the responsibility of the tug pilot up to a point, but the glider pilot's responsibility is to make sure he makes it as easy for the tug pilot as possible. So when you're on the ground about to start off, you've got to take up the slack slowly. Yeah, very slowly. And then as he accelerates, you will try to get your, as soon as you feel that the, the glider is ready to fly, at about a speed of about 65, the, pilot, the glider pilot should, at that point in time, take the glider up a few feet to release the drag on the, on the towing aircraft and hold it there until they, he sees the tug start to lift off. Then he moves up and he's in the high tow position, obviously. In other words, the rope is above the, the towing aircraft. And so he stays in the high tow position and he keeps in that, as the tug goes up, he goes up and stays in that position. And when the tug pilot's ready to make his turn, he, the, the glider pilot will spot that immediately and go around with him. So it's a fairly straightforward thing, but the, the big thing is if you've got a full load, you've got to make it as easy as possible for the tug pilot to get that power up plane off the, off the ground with as much energy and power in as possible. Over what distance would you you run before you became airborne? Well, if you're on a military aerodrome, you'd these at le least, oh, 1,500 yards. So you're in the air and you're beginning to climb? Yes. The flying height was round about 4,000, 5,000 feet, somewhere between 4 and 5,000, until you got near your landing zone. Now, it was rather important that we got down precisely where we should get down. And the target got to be round about 30 meters, 20 or 30 meters of where you should stop. And that isn't very difficult to do from if the weather's reasonable. And a good, good glider pilot should be able to do that. How do you know you've reached the right area? Uh, you can map read your way in pretty well. And if you studied your landing zone maps before you go, it was fairly straightforward. So how would you come down? Would you come down in a shallow dive? That's depicted by what kind of opposition you've got. Uh, for instance, when we did the German landing in, in across the Rhine. There was a lot of, of light akak fire at us from the ground, from troops. And the best thing you'd do was to get down fairly quickly and use your flaps at the last minute to, to, as, as a braking mechanism. We got away with it with that. What speed were you moving at to, when you were landing? Well, with a full load on, we were doing about uh, 80, about 75 to 80. So that's about 85 to 90 miles an hour? Yeah, something like that. Do you have wheels? Yes, we have wheels on the horses, yeah. What's your biggest fear about landing? Didn't worry me very much at all. Not get too close to the enemy troops, particularly if they were dug in. Keep, keep a bit of breathing space between rifle fire and the glider, if possible. What about those telegraph poles I remember seeing stuck up all over the area? Well, very fortunate that they put them in straight lines about, I should think, about 60, 70 feet of, uh, apart, which was not quite the sufficient to land the glider down, but at least we could take two feet off each end of the wingtips. And the advantage was we could slow a bit faster by doing that. 
Was it a very tense period landing, under fire? Yes, you don't, you don't realise you're being fired at. All you're doing is concentrate on getting the thing down on, the, on a flat surface and getting your, your troops out as quickly as possible. And uh, you've got so many things to do, you're not, thinking, you're not frightened of it, you just get, down, get on with it. Right, you're down. What happens next? On D-Day, um, my job was simply to get back to UK, and I had a, a little chitty to tell me to get down to the beachhead and get back to UK. Obviously, if they wanted another resupply, they were going, going to use the gliders again. So you went over on the afternoon of D-Day? That's right, yes. And you were back in England? On the 8th of the... Uh, 8th of June. So that's two days after. That's right. Did you expect to survive? Yes, I did. Weren't there even moments? When I found out Nobby was actually dead in the slit trench, I think. Uh... Nobby was your co-pilot? That's right. Why am I still alive and he's not? He's not. You know, you can do nothing with blast. You can, nothing you can do when your head is stove in with the blast from a mort big mortar shell. But why, why the blast went his way and not my way is beyond, you know, it's one of those things. 